understand faith more in how to, how to apply faith. As a matter of fact, this uh, particular teaching today is going to be called, um, is called Applied Faith. Applied Faith. Just like you will apply um, medicine to a, to, a, to, a, to a wound or something, but applied faith. People have faith and sing about faith and pray about faith, but many times they're sitting on their faith and not really applying faith. So we call this applied faith. We don't want just to listen to God, but we want to walk with God. We want to um, be able to be a doer of the things God tells us to do. And when he tells you to do something, because God is a faith God, he includes himself in your project, meaning that you, when you do it, um, he might, in often will, <clears throat> give you a project um, that is beyond your capability of doing it. Um, he brings David to the front line, right? And uh, David thought he was just, you know, delivering a carryout <laughs> and bringing it uh, food to his brothers. But uh, God had bigger plans, and he wanted David to be the one that is going to be used to um, s silence the mouth of Goliath and, and, and win the battle for Israel against all those Philistines, thousands of Philistines. So he's going to use one person to do that. And so notice he'll give you a project that's beyond your capability because God never intended for you to do it without him. And the only way you can connect yourself to God is by faith. The only way. The only way. You don't have something, you better go to somebody that's got some, Because that is the only way. God is connected to us and our projects or things that we have to do by faith. By faith. Okay? And he meant for it to be that way. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. So, we know faith has to be involved. We overcome the world, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5. We overcome the world by faith. And that's the way we're going to overcome it. And if we don't have faith, again, we can't do the things that God is calling us to do. Now, when God operate, uh, has you to operate in this earth, he never wants you to operate based on where you are positioned or based on where you are located at that time. He wants you to operate based on where you came from. The Bible says in John chapter 3, 3, that you must be born again. And in the Amplified, it says born from above. The Bible says in Philippians chapter um, 3 and verse 20 that we are actually citizens of the commonwealth of God. We are the citizens of heaven. And so this is where you were born from, just like Superman. Remember I talked about Superman and how Superman was born on Krypton, which is this imaginary planet. But he was born there, and when he came here, he wasn't limited to the how the people operate here. He was, he was Superman. And that was an endowment that was given to him because of the things that were in him because of how he was born. It's different. Now, I know that's kind of a mythical or comic book, comic book kind of stories, but the thing of it is, is you're the same way that you were born different. Over here in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians, looking at um, a verse 3, uh, chapter 3, rather, and here's what he says here in verse 18. But we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So when we get in this Bible and begin to meditate its scriptures, its truth, then we begin to change our image. And that image is the thing that stops you or starts you. That image is the thing that decides how far you're going to go, so forth and so on like that. In the book of Proverbs, in Pro Proverbs in chapter 4, over in Proverbs chapter 4, I'll get there in just a minute. 
he says here, I'd, I'd like to put these down because I want you to study them because on these FaceTimes, I would really want you to grow in faith. Um, he says here in verse 23, he says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. One translation says, out of it are the boundaries of life, or the, in the Hebrew. It's the boundaries, that's what I was told. And the boundaries of how you can operate are not outside. The boundaries of how you can operate or how you can operate are going to be inside. So you've got to guard your heart. Because the world system, Satan, remember now, it's, it's his advantage to plug in you the limitations of a person of this world. It's, it's to his advantage because if you've got limitations outside of that and you have the limitations that God has given you, you can defeat him every time. So he's no match for you. And things that God has planned for you or planned for this earth, you can be instrumental in making those things happen. Applied faith. So I've, I've, I've got faith. I've, I'm born again. And once I'm, I'm born again, I'm born with faith. I'm born with it. That's, that's part of the nature by which I was born. This is one of the forces that I have in my heart. It's called faith. Love is another force. Joy is another. All these things are inside. So these things have to come out, but I have to develop them as they come out. See, it's like a seed already in you, but you've got to grow that seed. So if we can go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he says here in verse uh, 13, there is no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted or tested or tried above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a, te make a way to escape. So God won't allow us to be tempted, tested, or tried above that we're able. So according to that, of what that says, that God will never have you to face anything that you cannot overcome. He'll never have you to face anything you cannot overcome. So that's good news. You know, so if I'm faced with something, that means I can overcome it. You know, I know we're going to show you the missing link, it's usually wisdom, but I, I want to want you to see this, that you are an overcomer. Anything in this earth you can overcome. Doesn't make any difference. Why? You are Superman, Superwoman. You are, you are something that is exceptional above anything that is the natural, of the natural man. You have the nature of God. That's, that's, that's in your nature. So, as we look at this and go back here to uh, Mark chapter um, 11 again. So here's Jesus, and Jesus comes up on this tree, and this tree is bearing no, no fruit. Inside of you is a production center, and you have production capabilities. And so what happens is you have to produce something. Now, what, what you have to produce, Jesus said over in Matthew 15, that every tree in you or is planted in you that the heavenly Father is not planted shall be rooted up. So this tree, or the way I believe, my belief system, is inside of me. What I believe is in my subconscious. That's, it's set, and it's designed to keep you on the level of what you believe. You go beyond that, you get uncomfortable because you don't believe. You, you, that image is not inside of you. But what we want to put inside of you is an image that with God all things are possible. So there'll be no limits anymore. And so to do that, you're going to have to get into the Word of God. You're going to have to hear the Word of faith. By the way, uh, in, um, they were, the, the word in America, I don't know other countries and so forth, that lang English is a language of, of money. English is. Um, well, for you, the language of money is faith. And so as you get faith and start operating in faith, you're going to see how... Um, you know, increase can come to your life as you operate in faith. Now, that's one of the first things God had to teach Abraham. He had to teach him how to change his speech, how to talk, because he didn't know how to talk. Look what it says in Romans.
this is Romans chapter 4. And I'll start reading here at verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So over in Ephesians 5.1, it says, be ye imitators of God. It says, copy him and follow his example. So for God to get light into the universe, he said, let there be light. In other words, he called darkness light, and it was. So whatever God spoke, that was it. But he didn't speak in time. You follow what I mean? He didn't speak in time. Uh, He spoke in faith. And any time you have faith, faith dictates the time. You see, in Genesis chapter, chapter 1, on the fourth day, God created time. Okay? So time was a creation of God in the earth and so forth. You, you, they've got even movies on it that you go too far outside of the earth and so forth and so on. Something happens to time. But, but in this, he created time and we measure things in time. You know, how long it would take for something to happen or how many light years it is away, so forth and so on. All right, because light moves at 186,000 um, miles a second or something like that. And, and so we do everything in time. But once you come into the kingdom, you operate by faith and faith dictates the time. Remember when we were talking about when I started the Joseph Business School, I got Dolores and, and, and Ray, uh, Dr. Thomas Abed and, and, and her husband, Ray, they both had gone to, you know, this Ivy League business schools. And so I said, hey, you're, you're here with me at the, in, in the church with members. I said, I want you to help me start a business school. So I took, gave them the project of what I outlined, what I'd like done. And they go away and they come back to me and say, Pastor, we look at this project, it'll take about one to two years. I said, no, let me go pray about it. I went and prayed. God said, tell him it'll take um, um, two months. And, you know, of course, and trying to figure it out. Why? Because in this natural zone, it's a time zone. See, it's, it's where you and I practice uh, everything and, and we um, set up everything based on time. But in the kingdom, you base it on faith, see? And so now faith is the way you plan, not by time, okay? But plan by faith. So they did, they took my word for it, and all of a sudden things start happening. Now, how can this be? How can this be? Now, remember what I said, faith, the language of, of, of God, it's a language of money, it's a language of, of increase. If faith is the... Um, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, in the Amplified, it's a title deed. It's an actual giving you ownership of what it is that you are b- believing for and so forth. So this faith that as we start operating in faith, it uh, takes faith to receive from God. I'm talking about applied faith now. It takes faith to receive from God. I have um, something that I outlined, which is uh, what I'm going to teach on this morning, what I'm teaching on now. Well, how did it come? It came by faith. It came by faith, see? Now, where was it? Now, let's go over here to Isaiah 46. Where was it? Um, in Isaiah 46, he says here, And I'll start reading at verse 9. He said, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. In other words, everything I said will come to pass. Now, Dream with me for a minute. Just envision. Just act like a, like a little child for a minute. Here's a level called the earth. Okay? And our earth is surrounded by um, some cosmic, you know, 
um, reality. So here's the earth, and on top of this earth, you've got cities and buildings and so forth and so on. Just imagine, just outside of this physical dimension is the fourth dimension, which is the, I think it could be called, I don't know, the cosmos spelled with a K or something. I, but anyway, it's outside of here. I call it the eternal. It's part of the invisible reality that is more real than what you can see. It's more real than what you can see. Now, what is it? It's what God has prepared for this planet. All right? It's, 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 it's every system. It's every work of wisdom. It's every health and healing. Uh, your where Jesus came in Matthew chapter 15, he healed the lame, every arm, every leg, every new invention, everything is already there according to God. It's already there. It's already there. He declared the end from the beginning. I was reading a book uh, by... Uh, uh, my dear friend going on to be with the Lord, Dr. Miles Monroe, and he was talking about how he visited G General Motors' plant and how they took him to a warehouse and he saw all these, these parts. And, and he asked them, he said, no, no, what are those? He said, these are, these are parts. He said, um, oh, this part for cars. He said, no, those parts for cars we have now are over here. He said, these are parts for cars that haven't, been, haven't come out yet. These are new next year and next year. He said, you make the parts first? He said, yeah, we make the parts first. Now, isn't that interesting? God makes the parts first. Well, let's go back to something. Let's go back to Psalm 139. He says this. Let's start here at verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. All oh, this is revelation now. Watch this. Verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee, and when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. So my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect or unperfect, in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How Precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is the sum of them. Now notice what he said in verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. In thy book, all my members 
were written. Now, here's what, what he's saying here. God made you. You are fearfully yet wonderfully made. And he made you unique. All you have to do is look at your fingerprints. And you are unique. Now, with that, God finished you on the assembly line and knew in the future, because he sees the end from the beginning, that somebody was going to smoke too many cigarettes and their lungs start having problems. So he knew that. So he put an extra pair of lungs in the invisible warehouse with your name on it. Now, I'm not especially talking to you, but whoever I'm talking to, he, he w- could be something else. Why? Because when, when he then makes you and puts you in the earth, it may be that at a certain part of your life, now you need um, a new pair of lungs or you need a new shoulder or shoulder muscle or you need some cartilage in your joints or you need all of that he saw and put away. All of that. Everything. It's right there. Watch this more real than the part that's operating in you right now. (laughs) That's the key. All right? And look at Revelation, Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne, watch this, said, Behold, I make all things new. I make all things new. So here, God can give us new parts. So if you look at this, let's come back now. Let's read applied faith. Let's come back to Matthew's gospel and Matthew chapter 15. And looking here at um, verse 29. And Jesus departed from thence and he came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee. And he went up into the mountain and he sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them Those that were lame, watch this, blind, watch this, dumb, watch this, maimed. So here's somebody maimed. They're missing an arm, a leg, why? Maybe diabetes set in, so forth. They had to amputate their foot, so forth and so on. So they brought those people to Jesus. And watch this. Insomuch that the multitudes wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be made whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorify the God of Israel. So it's interesting here how he supplied that, see? Now, now you, you got to understand that what did he do with it? He transferred it. See, it, it, I understand that we have um, heart transplant. I understand we have now bone transplant. I understand we have all of that. But he's making it so there's no incision. See, he, he's making it so that he can do something without creating a wound, without so forth. He, he's, he's doing this. Now, Jesus did that. Now, here's, here's the good news. This, this is where you fit in. Over in John, John's Gospel, and John chapter 14, and here's what he says here in verse 12. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Watch this. And greater works than these shall he do. Woo-wee! If you have not learned to use faith to dominate time, then you'll find that that same principle is used to dominate matter. So you can't move matter around from the invisible to the visible. You can't. If you can't dominate time, you can't dominate matter and you can't dominate space. And, and, and it's, it's, all, it's all in the book. If you read 
over in now uh, this, this I know I'm taking you deeper, but you that's why you're tuned in. Praise God. We gotta apply this faith. Now over here in, in, in John chapter chapter six. Over in John chapter six, which is a fairly long uh, chapter, um, this is when Jesus shows up and um, he uh, in verse nineteen and, and so when they had rowed and went about, uh, about 20 or 30 furlongs, that's about uh, uh, three or four miles, it says here that Jesus walking on the sea, and he drew nigh unto him and uh, into the ship. Watch this. And they were afraid, all right? And of course he said, you know, be not afraid, so forth and so on. All right, so he gets in the ship. And then you'll go on down and you'll see that immediately they were at the land because he's dominating matter. He's walking on the sea. He's, he's not allowing gravity and the laws of this earth to dominate him. He's dominating that. Now, all of this, he said, you can do. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about it. See, because what I'm saying is, is that he doesn't, he doesn't go down to the level of, 